want to first call attention to the excellent job the media has done to inform us of John Lewis. Hasn't the media been tremendous in keeping us informed? I've never seen such coverage, but John deserved it. But I want to talk a moment in my presentation on John before he became famous. I met John, I came to Atlanta, Lillian Miles and I came to Atlanta on the same day. She came to work at the university, um, Atlanta University, and I came to work for Martin Luther King Jr. in the Southern Christian Leadership Conference. And that's when I met John. Saw him all the time, we were all involved in the same quest for equity and justice in this America. And I got a chance to see him all the time. And I admired his fervor and all of his tenacity. And Lillian was single. And so I decided that Lillian needed a good man, not just the bums who were approaching her. She was highly intellectual, well-traveled, well-educated, and I wanted her to have someone who really would appreciate her skills and her talent. So I looked around and decided that I liked John. But Lillian didn't like John particularly. And so she thought he was kind of slow and I said, but Lillian, he's busy. He's fighting the evils of the world. And she said, yes, but. Well, I decided, girl, listen, this boy is going places. So let's see what he can do to get this thing moving. So we decided what I did uh, as her friend. And that's what you do for friends. You have to help them out. <laughs> and so. John had to go to the hospital for uh, an examination, and I said, oh, Lillian, this would be a good moment for us to be Florence Nightingale. So we went to the grocery store and bought a little bunch of flowers and took it to the hospital. I said, he'll be impressed, because he was a little slow, too. And um, I said, we'll go to the hospital, and that would just impress him that he will notice you more because you're bringing him flowers while he's in the hospital. Well, we got in the hospital, and there was a young woman already there, and she was straightening out his pillow and adjusting his comfort, and then Lillian said, oh, shoot. Well, I said, but I've already asked John, John, do you have a young woman who you are especially interested in? And he said, well, not really. And I said, that's not the answer I'm looking for. I want a more definitive answer, because I got some things in mind. Well, you know, John was just slow about, well, not really. Well, I decided on uh, New Year's Eve, um, Lillian was single, as I said, and didn't have any plans. So I said, well, I'll have a, a dinner party, invite the two of them and maybe they'll give us a chance. Well, I was known as the one who gave big parties, so Lillian thought I was gonna have a big party. John thought I was having a big party. When they got to my house, there was only room for three of us. <laughs> the two of them and me. And so now we're discussing the wilds of the world, and I'm hoping now that they're gonna get a little closer and closer well, because and when John didn't have a date on New Year's Eve, I knew he didn't have a commitment. Everybody has a date on New Year's Eve with somebody somewhere. So I figured, well, I'm ahead of the game now. It's New Year's Eve, and here I've got him. And then things start happening. And still slowly, not fast enough for me, but I was patient. And finally, 
Lil and said, I do like him. I said, okay, I'm ready now. I set a date, got a dress ready, and we're going to have a wedding. And so, and I'm not really sure. I asked John not too long ago, did we ever ask you, would you take her? I don't think I ever got him an opportunity to propose. We just had a wedding. <laughs> and so now, it looks like things are going to be okay. So we had a big wedding. I did all the planning because Lily was still slow. And I did all the planning and had the big wedding. All the family came, so we had a wedding. Now, things were doing okay. And she said, you know, but I don't like the idea of that girl um, looks like she had, you know, some designs on John. I said, honey, don't run away from competition. We can handle competition. We'll get rid of that girl so fast she won't know what happened to her. <laughs> and we did. And they got married. <laughs> Well, I want you to know they were very happy. But when she found out, now Lillian, as I said, well-traveled, well-educated, but she absolutely didn't like politics. Sorry, people, she didn't like politics. But when John expressed an interest, Lillian got in there and became his strongest supporter. I mean, she did everything, everything to make his successes work for him, and they did. Well, then uh, John Miles came along, and he was the cutest little boy. And then she said, they gave me the honor of being his godmother. And I said, oh, that's nice, and I've heard of godmothers, but what, what does godmother do? What, what am I supposed to do? And she said, well, if something happens to me and John, we want you to take care of him. I said, we gotta feed him? Because <laughs> John Miles could eat as a kid. And I said, gotta feed him every day? And he said, yes. And then spank him when he acts up. Well, I agreed to that. But John Miles, do you mind? Just stand up, John Miles, stand up. That's John Miles now. Now, now, wait a minute. Take a good look at John Miles. I'm four feet 11, and almost, they tell me, almost 90 years old. And there he is. And I'm supposed to spank him when he doesn't do right. <laughs> now, when I walk up to John Miles to give him a spanking, I gotta get permission from him. Can I spank you? Because he's pretty big now. But I loved John Miles then, and I love John Miles now. And I will take care of you and spank you whether you like it or not. Okay. <laughs> but Lillian and John stayed married. I put it together but it lasted 43 years. That's not a bad record, is it? They were happy, and Lillian gave him every support a wife could ever give a partner. And they gave love to John Miles in the process. John was an unusual individual. Ambassador Young was sitting over here and we all loved him all the time. His sincerity was apparent. He worked hard and he said that he wasn't gonna stop. And I don't need to tell you anything about John. All of you knew him. All of you know his fervor and his commitment to equity and the love he had for everybody. And I want us to look at the John we thought we knew 
the, the John who convinced us we knew the real man because he was constant. But I asked him one time, John, what in the world is bad trouble? I said, when I was a young girl, my sister and I, we were courting. Every time we'd go out on a date, my mother said, OK, have a good time, but don't get in no trouble. Well, we didn't know nothing else except trouble was not good. But John said, the good trouble is when your mother says, don't get in trouble, find a way to right the wrongs of our society. And he did a pretty decent job of that. And during this week, John was on television all day, every day. And I love young people. And I had an opportunity when people know that I like young people. So I was invited to speak to a group of kids. And I said to them, as you're watching television, I want you to know that's not a public relations program you're watching. That's a story of a man who lived the life they're talking about. John made a decision on the kind of life he was going to live. And I said to those young people that you have the responsibility of making your life have the meaning you want it to be. You can either decide to be the bank robber or the bank owner. It's your choice. The man you're seeing on television decided that his life was going to have a quality to it. Do as much as you can, as long as you can, as often as you can, because that's what John Lewis did. We won't forget John. But I would want to tell you, don't sit here and listen to these phrases. Don't forget what you read in the newspapers, how wonderful he was. Do something about the man he asked us to be in ourselves. And that is, be kind to everybody, love everybody, speak up and speak out. I don't need to tell you that. You know what he said. But what you can do, and I want to advise and admonish you to really give meaning to the John we love, vote. Thank you.